I'm John Buck. I'm going to be talking about a book that we just released last month called Company-Wide Agility with Beyond Budgeting, Open Space, and Sociocracy. My co-author is Yuta Eckstein, and unfortunately, she could not be here for this presentation. And uh, uh, she, however, her presence, I, I feel very much. What I'm going to do is cover the reasons for writing this book and then show you some applications and then hopefully take lots of comments for right now. Um, please go ahead and put any uh, messages or questions in the chat <clears throat> and I'll stop periodically to check. So um, the problems or the, the, the subject that um, the, this book is addressing is twofold. One is um, in general, how do we help uh, organizations, companies deal with the VUCA environment, volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous? And the second is how do we help companies who are using uh, agile, extend agile to the whole company? So how do you have company-wide agility? We all know that um, uh, software is, is uh, eating the world. I was just at a, a, a conference in the UN recently in which uh, somebody said uh, concerning public administration that we have to move from strategic thinking to complexity thinking. And that's what this book tries to do is get us from thinking strategically to, to uh, getting us to thinking complexly. Um, the first thing that Yuta and I did is, is um, we had just uh, been giving a, a presentation on combining sociocracy and agile. And when we talked about it afterwards, we said, nope, that's not the answer. There's more to it than that that leaves too many holes. We need more than just agile and sociocracy. So we started with what's the most successful of all of the, the modern methodologies that have been introduced to management, which is agile. And we've started, and we said, we've got to start with that. We're not gonna reinvent principles. And we took these principles from the Agile Manifesto and said, okay, we have to go more general than these principles. For example, you can't go into a, a restaurant and talk to the chef and say, chef, <coughs> you need working software over a comprehensive documentation. That's not going to generalize Agile to the restaurant, to the, to the kitchen. And so we had to generalize these values. We came up with the, excuse me, the generalization being self-organization for indiv in individuals and interactions, transparency for working software, constant customer focus for customer collaboration, and continuous learning for responding to change over following a plan. Um, right here is a, uh, something that is meant to be put on the wall as your plaque that captures these four principles. They're the agile principles generalized so that they can now be more easily expanded to uh, a company-wide um, venue. The um, first thing we did after we, we developed those values is we said, all right, um, <coughs> what needs to be added? And we, um, looked at all the different streams of development that we could find and we, with, with the, the clear understanding that there are many more things happening than this list here. We find about, out about them all the time. For example, Semco down in Brazil, uh, we thought was just a company and it's now got a Semco Institute and we're talking with them. So we probably should put them over here in egalitarian methods. But we looked at various philosophies, uh, Senge, the Theory U, uh, Spiral Dynamics, and that was kind of like too general. We, we, there was no companies operating with any of these things right here. They're just nice theories. Um, we looked at a number of specific implementations, Damanhur, Modragon, and so forth. We like Joy Inc. very much. It's a software company where they specifically are inventing things for themselves. Spotify says, don't copy us. We're doing it just for ourselves. And they don't particularly provide general overarching theory for how other people could kind of invent things for themselves also. So 
it was kind of like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. It was, there was some thoughts were too general, uh, some ideas were too specific. So we said, okay, we have to go look at theories where companies are actually using that to try to run the company. And maybe there's some learnings from facilitation techniques. So I'll start down here. We said there are companies that are, are trying to use open space to run the company. They call it office open space. And um, so we chose that over World Cafe and Appreciative Inquiry, which are nice techniques, but nobody's trying to run a company with them. We looked at other things such as agile, obviously that had to be in there. Uh, beyond budgeting uh, is a fascinating uh, approach to personnel and budget management at, that's uh, being used to run companies. Uh, Spot, Stott Oil up in Norway is one of the, the founding companies there. It was invented by a bunch of chief financial officers who said, you know, when we look in the mirror, we realize we're the biggest villains in the whole company. We're the ones causing the most trouble. Uh, Beta Codex is a spin-off of Beyond Budgeting. We decided to stick with the original um, the development. Same thing with sociocracy. It's got lots of spin-offs. We stuck with sociocracy. Um, we looked very carefully at World Blue and decided it really didn't help solve the, the, the challenge of uh, getting agile adopted company-wide, which is the big conflict with the, with the shareholders. So we ended up uh, choosing four methodologies, agile beyond budgeting, sociocracy, and open space. And we said, oh, we need an acronym for all this. And we realized that if you go B for beyond budgeting, OS for open space, S for sociocracy, and A for agile, you've got the name of a dance, Bossa Nova. And uh, if we had a longer time here, I would play you some samba, and then I would play you some jazz, and then I would let you see how they synthesized together into a new kind of music, which is what we attempted to try to do, is to synthesize all these different uh, methodologies into one. Um, let me pause real quick here and see if anybody has any questions. No, everybody's... Um, okay, the reason that we weren't more interested in Sociocracy 3.0 is the reason that we didn't try to um, use beta codex uh, or <clears throat> holacracy, which is that we decided to stick with the original development because we felt that was where the most depth um, uh, lay in each case. And we looked carefully, but we had to, we had to really hone in, and those were one of our criteria is to use the original development. Um, so um, <clears throat> as we worked in the book, we, we realized that we were actually in the process of developing a new organogram, a new way of describing organizations. This, and we went through it in several steps, we go through it in several steps in the books, but we started out with this diagram, uh, which has um, uh, the classic, I'll say hierarchical approach, which says that the shareholders are the ultimate owners and controllers of the company. And they go through the board, the CEO, they have support teams, they have production, Maybe they have matrix teams um, approaching the, the cross-functional team idea, but they very much, if you notice this heavier arrow effect or, or deliver to the customer, but they're not necessarily a very good structure for listening to the customers. So there's not an equal feedback arrangement here. Um, if the customer wants something and says to production, production may say, hey, we need to make a five-year investment in this because the customer wants it. And the CEO or the board says, no, we have to maximize shareholder value. And that's, we have to do that quarterly. So no long-term investments. And they squish the customer. So this is a, a, a we, we were very familiar with the pluses and minuses of the, the structure that was invented really in the time of the pharaohs uh, and has stood the test of time, but has some things that need to be added. We went to, um, lots of steps in development and eventually ended up with this diagram. Actually, I'm going to actually do a bad thing here and skip, which is to say we actually expand this diagram to, to look at how the company interfaces with the environment. But I'm just going to focus on this right now to talk about it a little bit. <clears throat> when you uh, are running full bossa nova, you are able <clears throat> through feedback loops to 
influence the board via the CEO. Uh, they have to listen to you as well as you listen to them. Um, you fully listen to the customer and, and deliver fully to the customer. Um, and in each of these, there are, I'm, if I, I'm gonna use the H word, hierarchies involved. Uh, you can think of it as, as uh, uh, levels of influence, uh, levels of abstraction. Um, and uh, the, you have to be able to work through those levels of abstraction. It, you may be dealing with Susie Jones, who's your immediate customer, but Susie has a boss and a boss's boss that you also are, are dealing with so that you're working up through the customer hierarchy. The support service teams typically are saying, you must, or we want to rule you by law, not, not rule for law, or say, what is it, not rule of law, but rule by law. Here's some red tape that you can have because it's rule by law. And you have all sorts of, of rules and regulations, some of which are needed and some not. And uh, actually beyond budgeting says a lot about how to deal with that. Um, but, it, but all of the systems, uh, open space and so on, have something to say about how you deal with this hierarchy here that ultimately when you get out to the very edge is government regulations and um, environmental requirements. There's lots of things that tell you what to do here. And you have to have a way of speaking back to them, speaking truth to power. This one right here, the value, the, the, the inspiration, I'm gonna call it, and passion is an interesting um, hierarchy in that if you think, okay, what's the spirit of Boeing? That's something very real, but it's abstract, but it's very real. Um, it can also be its own crushing hierarchy. I once met a young woman who was running a cafe that was sort of doing okay, but she said the reason she came to work every day was to make, was to find a beautiful way to present food. She didn't care whether the customers really liked it or not, or not. she just wanted to do that. Beauty was her ruling uh, body here. So uh, it was overriding all these other things. So you can actually have a, an, an autocracy of, of inspiration and value. So all these things are, need to be balanced so that you have uh, cross-functional teams that are the source of your, your, um, the, the value that you deliver to the world. Um, how do you do this? Um, how do you um, uh, implement Bossa Nova? <clears throat> only by probing, we're dealing with complexity. So we can't give you a theory or uh, a set of rules. You have to probe your situation. Reflection, we have a long section of the book on how, how you reflect about your situation. It's a little bit like a retrospective in, in um, um, Agile, but there's, there's more to it. You come up with probes to probe your situation, try and experiment, and very important, publish to your peers. It's often not done in companies and nobody knows what you're doing. So for example, ING, um, which wrote uh, an expert box for us in, in our book, uh, went through a series of experiments. They, in 2010, abandoned their waterfall um, uh, methodologies and uh, by 2013 were, uh, had the whole IT uh, system converted to agile. Um, and then they started saying, how do we go and transform the whole company they did a lot of experiments, some of which are related to sociocracy. They were aware of it being in Holland. Um, and um, a, a, a growth area for them is, is really beyond budgeting. They also used some open space things. And in 2015, gathered the whole headquarters into an Ajax stadium in uh, um, the Netherlands, in, in Amsterdam, and declared that they were no longer a a bank, they were an IT company delivering banking services. Um, and they have completely transformed the headquarters and they're in the process of doing it in all of their overseas operations. So the, um, uh, here are some, some example probes, like looking at the value of self-organization and the strategy of trust. You can actually probe that. We've got 23 or four sample probes in the book. Um, the, uh, do do cross-functional teams really uh, help us be more creative? Um, ING um, um, probably could you be used to be probing um, uh, feedback processes for common passion and inspiration um, as ways of dealing with the biggest problem they're having, which is everybody staying aligned by values. That's a very fast spin through 
uh, of what ING did in terms of trying to um, organize itself. I'm at 15. I'm going to go one more slide here, and then we'll start taking questions for the next nine or 10 minutes. This is the book. Um, you can follow us on Twitter. Um, the, uh, it's all published on Amazon and, and LeanPub. And uh, many thanks for listening to this very fast spin through uh, what we hope is going to be a contribution to everybody being able to take the, the generalized principles of uh, agility company wide. At this point, I'm going to um, stop sharing so that I can see everybody and start taking uh, comments here. Um, and let's see. Um, yes, I did. I see that the sociocracy 3.0 person thought that that's more fundamental, and so we can agree to disagree. Um, Dennis Cote, purpose hierarchy. Can you say more about that? Uh, no, I just heard that in a previous presentation that you know um, you you wanted to find a way to call the hierarchy. Uh, it's not a power hierarchy; it's a purpose. Yeah, information. I I like very much the the concept I got from sociocracy of both and thinking. When you bring in bossa nova, when you bring in sociocracy, you end up with a both end situation. You have both; everybody is completely flat, and you have some sort of levels, call it hierarchy or whatever. It's too bad that hierarchy has such negative connotations because it actually has lots of practical uh, uses. Um, what do I know about Latin American companies implementing sociocracy? One of the <coughs> ones that's used it for a long time is um, um, Terra Viva down in Brazil. It's a big agribusiness. If you buy tulips, it's likely to be, be coming from Terra Viva. Uh, they've won all kinds of awards. There's lots of other activity happening in Latin America. Um, I had to turn down the opportunity to take a trip along the Amazon in Peru. Somebody else is going to be teaching some of the indigenous people. Uh, there's uh, somebody who's been working with MetLife Insurance Company down in, in um, um, Chile with very excellent results with the sales staff. Um, there's things going on in Ecuador. And um, I know that the... Um, I'm working with some people in, in Sao Paulo with the, um, the group called um, Awaken Love, which is a, um, a Hindu-based um, religious group. So those are just a few of the many things going on. Any, anybody else have any knowledge to, sh to share about sociocracy in uh, Latin America? No, nobody fit for that. Um, Let's see, um, what does Bossa Nova add to sociocracy? It doesn't add anything. It's more what does sociocracy add to the Bossa Nova mix? It's sociocracy is a stream of development. Uh, Bossa Nova is a river of development. Um, it, um, um, sociocracy is absolutely essential to the whole feedback process. The concept of, of double linking um, is, is a, a major contribution to anybody trying to bring egalitarian methods to business. Anybody else have an opinion about that? No, okay. Um, does the book review each of the theories, methodologies, companies that we identified in slide four of your slideshow? We um, do um, go into some depth in each of the theories and then we give a lot of uh, pointers to how you can find more. Each of them is a very complete theory in itself. We also talk a lot also about other methodologies like Kinefin and design thinking, human systems design, lean startup, all those we, we work into it. And so there's a lot of, uh, we, we, we try to give lots of pointers in the book. And we, we do uh, talk a little bit about each of the companies, just enough to give you a pointer. Um, I am aware that Gal Gale is having some troubles. I think that it, the, um, um, that from what I can tell, it's because of uh, funding uh, troubles that happened. And um, I, I can talk before uh, Thursday at 2 p.m., yes. Um, so if you want to give me a call, that's fine. Um, 
what is my Twitter feed? The Twitter feed is, is uh, I think you mean by that, the hashtag, it's uh, Agile Bossa Nova. And we're on LinkedIn and, and do lots of Twitter stuff. Um, there are companies that make their operating system open source. Here's one example. Uh, Niad, can you, uh, I guess, Nenad, I guess, could you say more about that? I'm not clear what you're saying. Can't hear you. Can you, can you put more in the chat because I'm not able to hear you? Um, Beatrix, can we write the email address? Yes, here's my email address. It's uh, john.buck at governancealive.com. Um, <clears throat> whoops, that went to Anna Ruth privately. Here's to everybody. Here's everyone. It's, it's uh, john.buck at governancealive.com. And if I fail to respond to that, because I get a lot of email, uh, text me at 410-245-8654. Be happy to talk. Um, let's see. Um, Boston Nova is reinventing organizations on steroids. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, what do you mean? Um, sociocracy alone does not go together with ownership. I don't understand that question. Could, could whoever, it says generation uh, Gundel in common. Could you, whoever that is, please explain more what you mean? Yes, hello. Um, you said that, that uh, uh, I was asking if, soci if Bossa Nova adds anything to sociocracy, and, and I understood that sociocracy does not, does sociocracy work in any kind of organizations, or do you have, or there are some organizations where so sociocracy is too much, and Bossa Nova would be the better choice? The sociocracy works from a, an individual one person to very large organizations, and I've yet to find a kind of organization that it didn't work for. I mean, I've got clients that are everywhere from uh, fundamentalist evangelical Christians to um, people that manufacture plastic. And, and uh, the other people that are working with sociocracy have not found a culture uh, or, a, or a type of business that doesn't seem to, to accept it. Um, there may be, but um, it seems to, 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 to be across the board. The, what sociocracy does not do well, there's not a lot of theory in it for uh, inspiration, for um, uh, all of the, the tools that are in Agile, uh, for the budgeting process. There is something about uh, money in sociocracy, but not the, the richness that's in um, uh, beyond budgeting. So it's, it's each of these tools, if, if you talk to a, sociocracy expert or an agile expert or open space expert, they'll all tell you that all you need is their methodology. But uh, they, in fact, they're speaking from a framework and what we invite you to do is, is do framework hopping. There are um, tools and perspectives and other streams of development that, that are very helpful for the overall. Mm -hmm. um, okay, thanks. Yeah, Dennis, you wrote, I, I like the cat. Kat, I, can you say, Dennis, more what you mean by that? No, I just like your cat being in the screen. Oh, the cat, yes. Oh, yeah, this is midnight. Yeah, here he is. He's got nice yellow eyes. <laughs> he helps me a lot. Um, the, um, are there, I'm just looking to see what more questions may have come in. Um, the, uh, no, the ING shareholders did not agree to a Bossa Nova implementation. What they did is they uh, changed their whole company orientation uh, by experimentation. Um, there are, um, they're definitely in touch with us and they're looking at some of the other things that the Bossa Nova approach offers, but 
what my point was there is that when you're going to be implementing something, you need to be doing it through probes and experimentation. Not that, um, not that they use the whole bossa nova thing. Um, they're the only company that I think is using all of the bossa nova elements is uh, something called Titan soft in, in uh, Singapore. Um, they uh, have built up over time and uh, they were one of the people that gave us an expert box and they're just now bringing in beyond budgeting. They had already had agile and open space and sociocracy. So uh, this is on the leading edge. People, nobody other than Titan soft is doing the whole thing at this moment. Um, does sociocracy work for movements that do not have defined membership? Yes. Um, the, when you go into networking, um, you're talking more about going into concepts like um, um, uh, collective impact. And I would recommend that you if, you, if that's what you're interested in, the person who knows most about that is Tracy Kunkler. And check out Circle Forward. Uh, I don't have the vet website memorized. It's something like just circleforward.org. Um, but uh, she is an expert in it. I've worked on some of the networks with her. You modify the double linking concept a bit when you go into a network council, uh, if you go that formal. Uh, otherwise, the, um, the, the general concepts of consent seem to, to support it. But a network that matures generally develops a network council. And there's definitely some neat experiences with that. Um, the, um, John, I've received a bunch of private messages regarding my question about to you about S3. It seems to be a quite a bit of interest in here in relation to what you're talking about. Would you be able to share anything more about why your interest came to an end in S3, how exactly it falls short for you? Because my experience is that it also seeks to combine agile sociocracy and some critical missing pieces. It's fast growing and I see why I'd love to hear more about my thoughts from you, from, uh, from me as to why. Um, the, um, I've looked very carefully uh, at S3. I'm not an expert in X S3. If I were, I might have said, okay, go with S3. But I don't see anything new in S3 despite the protestations otherwise. And I see some of the things like the, um, um, uh, the, the driver as, as obscuring the, uh, some of the engineering that's in sociocracy. So uh, I don't, you know, it's like, uh, I know people are using it very successfully, um, but in terms of the depth of theory, I don't think it's there as much as it is in the original uh, sociocracy. And, uh, the, um, um, and in, in some ways it obscures the, the engineering principles. Um, Let's see, and, and in general, we said we're going to go with the original source stuff, which is why we didn't go with beta codex. Uh, that's it, we are done our time. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs>